Hello everyone. Welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sell the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. As you know, we're not going to be sewing anything today because it's What's Up Wednesday. Now some weeks I have hardly anything to tell you about and other weeks I have a lot to tell you about. We're going to go with that one. As most of you know, I had a craft fair this past weekend. And so many of you have been dying to know how it went, what happened, etc. So first, let me say, you guys are simply the best. You care about what happens to me. You care about how I do. You're my friends. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I wasn't going to cry. I appreciate that you guys were behind me, rooting for me, and wondering how I did. Thank you for that. You guys mean a lot. Okay, so before we get to the craft fair talk, I have some things to show you, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is pan the camera onto my work table so that I can show you what I got in the mail over this past week. I have received some wonderful things. Uh, I'm going to start out with something that I ordered. And just in case you guys are interested in what I ordered, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so that you can take a look at her stuff because I love it. <laughs> And let me say, this is the first time I have ever ordered anything like it online. I'm going to give you a look. You hang on. We'll take a look. As soon as we sort the mail, I'm going to tell you all about my craft fair. The good, the bad, and the ugly, because there's a lot. Let's go over to the table. Take a look. Now this package is something that I ordered, but I've been excited about it because the woman that makes these does such a good job. I've seen them. I have never purchased from her before, but I wanted to share it with you guys because I knew it would be worth it. Let me zoom out a little bit here. I ordered, she makes cards. And I've seen pictures of them. I like people who smile when it's raining. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Wait till you guys get a load of this. These are beautiful. Look at this. The flowers, the handmade. Oh, I love it. I love it. She does such a beautiful job. There's card number one. Card number two. I love this. Oh my goodness. Are we opening it wrong here? Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess not. That's just me. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm totally impressed. <gasps> yes gorgeous isn't that so if you guys are interested her name is gail marshall and she has i believe whoops i believe she has a facebook page i'm not well, yeah i think it is let me see but uh it's cards crafts and cabernet cabernet by mama vegas it's at go imagine and I will leave her link down below because I keep moving this every which way. But her name is Gail Marshall and she does a wonderful job if you guys are interested in any one-of-a-kind cards. I know they're beautiful. And you know, sometimes you just need that special something. Thank you very much, Gail. You mailed those out very quickly, and I appreciate that. And your work is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to show these in the order I received them. 
And by the way, I wanted to say, please excuse my appearance today, my old denim shirt and all. <laughs> it has cooled off today and it felt so good to be able to put a long sleeve shirt on. Okay, last Wednesday, actually last Tuesday, as I was filming my What's Up Wednesday video, I finished filming and as soon as I was editing, actually I was uploading the video to YouTube, the mail came and this is what was in the mail, okay? So one of my subscribers, one of you wonderful people went over to my Amazon wish list and purchased some zippers. Look at those. Now, for anyone wondering, these are what I use on my zippered bags. So I have a lot of bags like this. Now, this bag, I'm just going to give you a for instance. This was a bag that, I'm going to get off on a tangent. This I was starting to talk about the zippers, and I'm going to go back to that in a second. But this was an order from someone and they didn't pick up their order. So I was left with the bag. I'm going to take the tag off it to get that out of our way. So it wasn't anything really fancy. It has some beautiful pink fabric. And as you can see, it is made for knitters. Nice fabric. I used a little charm that has the yarn and the needle. And inside, this is what they wanted. They just simply wanted a pocket. They didn't want snaps or Velcro on it. They determined the size that they wanted and I made it how they wanted. It has one of my little tags on there. Oops, I'm gonna move my iPad. That's how I see if I'm centering something. See, I'm giving away all my secrets now. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so I took this to the craft fair to sell. Now let's take a look at a different bag. This bag, there are, I had marked them $15 unless otherwise marked because this one, was $20 and it was $20 because it has the pocket and the charm. So I charged a little bit more, but as you can see, it didn't sell. Now I have been using, I made this for my husband. This was the first open wide zippered bag that I ever made. You're seeing history right here. Okay. There, as you can see, there's no line. Well, there's a lining in it, but there isn't any batting or fusible fleece like this one has. It just simply has the fabric. I use it every single day. Now, this zipper that you're seeing, I made this about six, I'm going to guess six years ago. And so for anyone wondering about the quality of buying the bulk zippers, probably made in China, that you get on Amazon, it's, it's mostly all I buy. And I say mostly because if I were making a tote bag or something, I am going to buy a brand name zipper. But for these and for the little coin purses and monster bags, I love these zippers. Now. So one of you was so kind to me, went over and bought me another set of zippers. And I love it. Thank you so much. I'm not going to say her name, but she knows who she is. And I really appreciate it. You surprised me. And I must say they came at a great time because I have, I do have a lot of zippers. But the problem is when you get these packs is sometimes you need more pink than what you have or whatever. So it's always good to have an extra set. And then I see that this one, I didn't realize it, but it came with a lot of black and white. So that's a great thing. Thank you very, very much. The next thing to come in the mail, I kind of knew, I had a hint about it. Some of you may know Adam. He has his own YouTube channel called Adam Sews, which I'm going to link down below 
in the description box. If you haven't checked him out, you're going to want to, especially if you love to make bags because, oh boy, can that boy make bags. He's so sweet and he's got the cutest little dog that loves to come to his sewing, sewing room, Luna, and he has a lot of interesting items. So anyway, uh, he and his husband knew that I had been having a really rough time lately with some issues and they sent me something. So Adam went to Missouri Star Quilt Company and he ordered something. Now this arrived on Thursday and it was killing me not to open it. Like I just couldn't even stand it, but I had to get out my tripod. I had to look presentable and all this and that in order to film it. So I kind of held back because of that. I did do a separate filming of me opening it, but the sound quality wasn't great, which is what happened with all the items I'm about to show you. I ended up having to do this and refilm because there was something with the sound. You wait till you see this. <gasps> What's this? Some Tula Pink from the Tiny Beast line. You see those raccoons? I just love the detail. Uh, anything that you get from Tula Pink, the detail is amazing. So this one with the raccoon is called One Man's Trash Glow Yardage. Um, I think it's all, some of them are glow, some of them are glimmer, but it's called One Man's Trash because I don't know if you can see, but this raccoon is trying to get into a trash can. And this one is eating an apple core. But see, that's the thing about Tula fabric is you, if you look, it looks like one design from away, far away. But when you get close up, you see other things. You know, like down here, it's a cola can and a fish bone. But you don't notice that until you look up close. So it's so interesting. And then this one is called Who's Your Dandy? Glimmer Yardage. Again, from the Tiny Beast line. So look at the little porcupine glowing and the beautiful flowers. But Look at what the porcupine quills are. They're not actually quills. Can you see that? They look like the dandelions when they get old and they go in the wind and they just turn to seed. See, that's what it is. Who's your dandy? And that's probably where the word dandy in the title comes from, huh? This is another one from the Tiny Beast line and it's called Oh Nuts. You see the squirrel, the acorns that are different colors. And I love that the squirrel has dots. I just love the fabric. And you see little stars of different sizes. So this one is a glow. This one is a glimmer. And this one is a glow. So I'm not sure if they glow in the dark or something. I don't know enough about it. But Nanny B, uh, a dear friend of mine who's also a subscriber, had sent me some fabric from Australia uh, when right after we first met. And that was my first uh, Tula Pink fabric that I owned ever. And she had gifted it to me. So Adam, thank you ever so much for that beautiful fabric. I really, really appreciate it. It really made me smile, made my day. Really, it, it helped make my day just that much brighter and I appreciate it. Okay, and then came a box yesterday. A what? A box? So inside were two of these. So these are the five inch. There's 42 in each and it's called Colorful Cats by Cheryl Haynes of Prairie Grove Peddler. And you can see, maybe I don't know how well you can see the fabrics that it shows. 
but it is there are two charm packs here but that's not all okay that's not all wait till you get a load of this i wish i could move my camera at the same time but i'm going to mess it up if i do this is a panel that matches those fabrics so i'm going to try to show you a little bit at a time isn't this beautiful if you know and it's so hard to pick favorites or anything like that but if i had to pick oh i guess i couldn't but i i do love these two bottom ones i've always loved birdhouses bees and uh flowers so those things went they just really went with this but see yeah it's so hard to pick a, a favorite part the whole panel is beautiful the whole panel but that was not all in the box look at that how bright and beautiful is that and i believe this is the same fabric that she had on the facebook group because Oh, no, maybe not. It was a different one. But there was a fabric similar to this that someone made something from on the Facebook group. But either way, love it, love it. Thank you. And then there was this. What? Quilty pencils. So I opened them. And these are so cute. And, of course, I have to have a favorite one, right? So there's one here. They all say something on them. And they all have quilt designs. See, a day pieced and quilted seldom unravels. When I learned how to quilt, I forgot how to cook. <laughs> how true is that? A quilt doesn't have to be perfect to be perfectly wonderful. If it's still ugly, you just didn't cut it small enough. Fabric can't solve everything. Wait, yes. Yes, it can. One fat quarter like one cookie is never enough. This one is hard to read. If Monday starts like this, keep a seam ripper handy. And then a... Uh, recopy of when I learned how to quilt, I forgot how to cook. Oh, goodness, I still have one in there. Today I'm feeling too creative for cleaning. And then my personal favorite, are you ready for this? Once you go scrappy, there's no turning back. <laughs> how true is that, right? So you would think in that box that that would be everything, but it was not. There was also a pattern that she sent me and a thank you note, and I'm going to read it to you. Dear Marie, thank you for all your YouTube videos. I'm really enjoying your channel. Though I am mainly a quilter, I like the other crafty things you make. Best wishes for all to go well with your craft fair that's coming up. Enclosed are a few fabrics and patterns and an Amazon gift card blessings from Stella. So Stella, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, you spoiled me up good in that box. Um, you guys are just amazing, really. I, it's just so much. Okay, and yesterday along with the box, came this and it had my name on it but the return address was no one that I knew it was like a company abundant earthworks and I was looking at it going hmm so I opened it and it's from an Etsy seller now I have one in so you can't see the other but I'll, I mean I'll show you the other Look at those beautiful silver earrings. See the spool of thread with the needle. I love them. I absolutely love them. And this plastic bag is actually to store them in. I was reading somewhere on here. Maybe it's in here. Um, 
it's somewhere that if you store it in there it avoids tarnishing as quickly so there was that and uh i was just so happy i love earrings you know i just do and these are from aunt die that's her username so diane thank you ever so much i really really appreciate your thoughtful gift you know you guys you're so good to me every day and you don't have to send me something for that to be true <laughs> if my husband were on camera which he never will but if he were on camera he would tell you guys how emotional i get you guys make my day with your comments your kind words you know and yes the gifts but i'm telling you you guys give me a gift every single day when i read those comments every single day okay i'm going to stop getting emotional i'm going to turn the camera okay so at the craft fair i had my tables laid out which i will post some pictures on facebook i did a cruddy job i realized that I am not a decorator, okay? And I had signed up to have one table, ended up with a second, but then I didn't have anything to place on the table for a tablecloth other than I had some checkered tablecloth that I hadn't taken for that purpose. I had taken so that I could fold them up and they would cushion my metal folding chair because I was sitting there so so it looked kind of busy on that side with that checkered tablecloth and all my items on top uh lisa marie had mentioned you know putting things at different heights which is a great idea but because i was riding with someone else goodness i have something under my glasses here anyway uh it wasn't uh a great opportunity or an easy thing for me to take a lot of different items and i had a lot of items to begin with so uh anyway i had these on the table my business cards and i think most of you probably saw the little container that my husband made for me and he makes these excuse this one it's junky <laughs> Right, full of stuff. I keep it next to my sewing machine. And as you can see, it has all kinds of stuff in it. Okay. And I have another one over there. He's had them made from Lowe's and Walmart. I think those are the only two yardsticks we have available locally. But he took the scraps from it and he made me the little business card holder. And I had a lot of compliments on that over the weekend. So I did leave some in there and then I had because I have two different uh, two different business cards made up. These ones I did just specifically for the fair and they don't say where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. They're just kind of a basic has my YouTube channel and my email address. You would not believe the number of people who wanted me to give them my phone number. And I was not comfortable doing that. I figured if they wanted to place an order or ask me something, they could do it by email. And then maybe I could make the decision about giving my phone number. But anyway, so I gave out a lot of these. And before I had even made a sale, so on Friday night, I had... Uh, it was a youngish couple, I would say probably late 30s, maybe. Um, and their daughter was in a wheelchair and she was severely disabled and such a sweetheart. I felt so bad. Um, and they came by the table and they were looking through everything. And the father said, uh, can I ask you, do you make these? And he picks up the bib that was on his daughter's chest. And it was one of those triangular, I think they call them a bandana bib. And I said, I absolutely can make those. I've made them in children's sizes and it wouldn't be difficult at all to change it into an adult size. So he took my card because he said they're paying $25 online per bib. Can you imagine? And so he asked me if I could go cheaper than that. And I said, oh, absolutely. And you know, 
I just feel bad. I, I understand, you know, we all want to make money, but I mean, that's terrible. $25. I was horrified. Anyway, next story. Um, about 30 minutes after they stopped by my table, I had another young couple stop by and they said that their young daughter, I can't remember if it was type one or type two diabetes that she has, but she has to have some sort of, I think it, they called it an insulin pump. And they want something made with a soft belt so it doesn't bite into her like the ones that they have. And I said, I absolutely could do that. So when I got home that night, I did look them up and they're not difficult to make. And the poor thing, she, that sweetheart, she probably is very uncomfortable with what looks like a pretty rough feeling belt against the skin, you know, and it just goes around their belly and snaps. So I'm sure if that's something you've got to have all the time, you want it to be comfortable. The next booth down from me, there was a woman and she had tumblers. They weren't, they didn't have a handle on them like this, but um, they were tall like this. And I think she had $22 on them. Excuse me, but they said all sorts of different sayings on them. So I asked her, I said, if I gave you a picture of what my YouTube logo is, of course, I don't have a logo yet. I really need one drawn or something. But I said, if I sent you a picture that looks like a cartoonish patchwork or something, could you put that on a cup along with? a YouTube symbol and Marie's Scrappy Creations. She said, absolutely, not a problem. So I am going to contact her as soon as I can figure out what I wanna use for a logo. And she's gonna make me a cup. Now she has different ones. She has coffee cup size with a handle and things like that. But I think I want the tumbler that's that's this size. And I told her, I said, I can't guarantee it, but I'm betting that if you make those, a few of my subscribers might be interested. And she said that she certainly does ship. I think she only ships here in the US, but she will ship. And of course, you have to pay for shipping. But I just wanted to throw that out there because when I get my cup made, I'll show you guys because I've been wanting to have like a t-shirt or something like that, but a cup could be adorable too because as you know, I've always got one right here. I've always got water going. Okay, so what we did is on Sunday, the last day, I went to her booth and I said, let's make a video showing my subscribers what you make and then they can envision my logo on it. So I held up my phone like this and Tammy and I stood there and we talked. And then you know what? <laughs> Something happened because when I came home to edit the video, there was absolutely no sound. It was just some static squealing. So I'm not sure what happened, but there was a lot going on at the craft fair at the time. So, okay. Now, as far as, I'm going to stop the stories for just a minute and tell you what I sold. Okay, and that I have to look at my paper. Um, I sold 25 key fobs, 14 of the bags, 11, whoops, I was, should have had this stuff out here so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I sold 11 of the small zip bags. I took all three monster bags from the tutorial. They didn't sell. Like, I swear, almost every single person that went past my table picked those up, looked at them, showed their spouse, or the kids showed the parents. Nobody bought one. Now, I had $7 on this one. Now the price tag's gone. I had eight on this one and seven on that one. I wasn't going to go any cheaper. So if people didn't like that, I was taking them home. I just wasn't going to go any cheaper. But anyway, I came home with them. Hmm, whatever. 
Um, I sold 12 of the jar openers, which a lot of people looked through these. They really liked them. But I did hear a lot of, oh, those are really easy to make. That's a great idea. I'm going to go make some. Now, let me just say for the record, I have been to craft fairs and seen things and told myself, I, I could make that. I want to make some of those. But I didn't say it out loud in front of a crafter who's standing there. Maybe I'm just different from other people. I don't know. But personally, I would not have said that. But I heard that probably three times. But I also heard those aren't hard to make. I did hear, oh, those are nice and square. I could never get them that square. And, you know, little comments like that. I sold four bookmarks, which are something I didn't show you guys because I didn't have them made at the time. I made them when I was sitting up at the craft fair. I sold three sets of mug rugs, three sets of pot holders, three sets of coasters, and four of the lace zip bags like we did for the tutorial. They didn't really have a lining. They just had a strap. They had the lace zipper. People like those. Um, I had a few odds and ends that aren't written down here, but I did pretty well. Uh, I've had craft fairs where I've sold $20 worth of stuff. I've had craft fairs where I've sold $40. This was my best by far, my best craft fair. I feel like I could have done better. Um, the first... Friday night and then all day Saturday, I was on the end, which I asked to be as far away from the sounds as I could. So that's on me. The problem is, is let's say that this is the arena where we were. There were tables on both sides and then in the middle. And I was in the middle and I was all the way up to the end. So when people would come up one side before they went down the other, they'd stop to look at Tammy's cups and they glance over my way but fully at least one third of the people weren't even coming over to see what I had so you can't uh, sell the people who don't even look at what you've got so uh, on Sunday I moved down uh, to a different booth I just lost my my place oh here we go <laughs> that wasn't the brightest idea okay um, remember I said there's good, bad, and ugly? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the ugly story over with because I was really angry for a lot of reasons. Um, when I was raised, my parents, or let me just say the adults in my life, whether they were aunts, uncles, grandparents, whatever, if it wasn't appropriate to talk in front of children, they didn't say it. Now, maybe that was just the era in which I grew up, but this guy, I'm not going to call him a gentleman, this guy really got to me, and it still bothers me today because of the child. So there was a little boy. I had one of these bags. It was a little bigger than this, and it was a Mario from the... You know, from this game, Mario and Luigi. Only it was only Mario that was on the bag. And this little boy came by with apparently his grandmother. And he stops. Now, he was about three and a half, four years old. Huge brown eyes. Great big baseball cap. And the bill was out over his head. Just adorable little kid. And I love kids. But anyway, so he's looking at and He's, Nanny, look. It's Mario. And he looks right at me, he says, I want the Mario. And I said, you do. And his Nana says, you're going to have to ask Poppy because Nanny doesn't have any money. So they leave. And about 10 minutes later, he comes back. Kid comes back and he's got his grandfather with him. And the guy had kind of a surly look on his face, you know. And he comes back to the table and he looks all around kind of scowling. Now, I had originally marked that bag at $12, but I came down on it because it was the last day of the sale. 
Okay, so I marked it at ten dollars. So he looks at it. He looks at me and he says, "Would you take three dollars?" I thought he was kidding. I seriously thought he was kidding. And I said, "No, sir. I'm sorry. I won't." I said that that wouldn't even cover the cost of my materials, let alone the work. Now, my first thought is. This isn't a yard sale or a tag sale type of scenario. This is a craft fair. You don't dicker on the prices. You just, if you don't want to pay it, you don't buy it, right? So the little boy looks kind of discouraged because I think he's pretty much figured out that he's not getting the uh, bag. I left his lights on. They're probably glowing right in your face from my eyeglasses. I apologize. All right. So I'm not going to take $3 for the bag. And I'm not going to tell you the language that he used, but he ruffled the top of the boy's hat, his head, and he said, It's okay, Todd. You don't need that. That's a piece of crap. Yeah. What a role model for for your grandkid. Like, seriously, mister, you're really you really just said that. Well, the poor kid, he his eyes are brimming. The tears are like right here. I wanted to cry for him. I was horrified. He was old enough to realize that his grandfather should have never said that to me, and he felt bad. So I kind of tried to smile at him, but I was so mad at that man that it was just ready to pull my hair out so that was the ugly story to tell you about okay so i also had another little boy on on sunday no saturday he came by and his dad says oh don't get too close because i was sitting there sewing and he said i just want to see daddy he was amazed with the sewing machine, how it worked. He wanted me to show him how it was threaded and how the mechanics of it worked. I love that because then he left saying, oh, I want a sewing machine. So I love that. So Friday, I was there three hours from five to eight. And I only sold about 40, 42 dollars, something like that. It was unbelievably hot and I don't deal well with heat. So Saturday was absolutely miserable. I was there from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I wasn't lugging all the, you know, like all this stuff home, but I had to pack it up every night and unpack it every morning. And it was hot. We were in one of those aluminum buildings and it had like barn doors, one on each end. So the air could come through, <laughs> could, it didn't really, because it was like 92 degrees. And I think we were near 100% humidity. It was so hot. So Saturday night on my ride home with my friend, I kept falling asleep. I was so embarrassed and I kept thinking, why can't I stay awake, you know? And I didn't want to eat. I felt nauseous. I didn't want to eat. So I just kept drinking water. I was drinking a lot of water. And I slept like a log Saturday night, Sunday morning, get up, do it all over again. I was fine Sunday morning. Well, by late Sunday afternoon, I knew something was really wrong. The nausea was overwhelming. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't get enough to drink. Like, I just couldn't. I was chugging water so fast that my stomach actually kind of felt, you know, like when you're a kid and you drink out of the hose or you drink too much and your stomach just feels really full. That was me. Um, about a half hour before I went home, I was shivering and I had goosebumps and I realized this was not good. Well, when I got home, as exhausted as I was, I, I was falling asleep sitting up. I realized I had heat exhaustion and, and that really was not good. I've always said I get heat sick and sun sick very easily because I do, but I don't ever remember a feeling that horrible 
from the heat before as I did from that. Um, that being said, never, ever will I do another summertime outdoor or indoor. I, it would have to be an air conditioning. I wouldn't do it again. I just wouldn't because I was all day yesterday because today is Tuesday. So I was all day Monday where I felt like I was just getting over the flu or that I like I had the flu because I felt awful. And I still was drinking a lot of water, but either way, it's over with. But what I got from the craft fair is heat exhaustion and it's terrible. I don't recommend it to anyone. There is another craft fair in my area. Actually, there's a few the same weekend in December. And it's inside a school gymnasium in one of the small towns nearby. And I'm about 80% sure that I would like to do that, but it's going to depend on a few factors. So I got home Saturday night and a friend of mine tagged me because on Facebook, the Northern Maine Fair Association had taken some photos. So guess who they decided to take a photo of? My face was beat red. My hair was drenched in sweat. And I'm sitting at a sewing machine inside their craft fair. And they took my photo and put it on their Facebook page. <laughs> this chickie was not impressed. But oh, well, what are you going to do? All right, so uh, yesterday I was feeling sick, but I was able to get my sewing room picked up. I went to put my stuff away. I sorted. And you know how good it feels just to do all that sort of stuff, like sort through maybe your zippers or your rickrack or whatever. I did do that. And you know what? Before we get too far from it, let me give you the creative word of the day. The creative word of the day is weather. You might want to tell me what your weather is like too. Ours has been hot. Today it's not, which is why I'm in my comfy old denim shirt. And I knew you guys wouldn't mind if I dressed comfortably. You guys are dressed comfortably. I bet some of you are even in your PJs, aren't you? Sitting there watching me with a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> and... For anyone waiting for a quilt block number three for our quilt along, I'm thinking that later on this week or towards the weekend, we're going to be doing that. As I just explained, having heat exhaustion, I'm a little bit behind the eight ball yesterday. So I'm kind of a day behind because originally I was shooting towards Friday to do it if I felt well, but um, I'm not going to say a day specifically, but let's look towards the end of the week or the weekend to do block number three. And that's going to be a live stream, everyone. Excuse me. Okay. Now, I want to talk again about these little coin purses. Okay, when you have a YouTube channel, you have what you call analytics, and they tell you how well your video has done. They tell you how many views you've received, how many thumbs up. They put it next to your other videos, and, and they rate you know how well it did compared to another one or whatever. So I checked right before I came online. Now it will tell you, I'm trying to think of how to describe this. Okay, this video here, What's Up Wednesday, this will drop or air at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. And when it's been up for, let's say, I'm just gonna throw out three hours. I can go on to the analytics and it will tell me how good it's doing versus other What's Up Wednesday videos. It might say you have an average view of 250 at two hours from time. Um, and this one you got 240, so your views are down or they're up or they're average. So I noticed the other day, because I mean, like I say, I was busy with the craft fair and I had left that video, the scrappy monster coin purses. I let that drop Sunday morning. I'd had that done since I think I had it done Thursday. 
and, re and ready to go. So I was exhausted. I was sick. I wasn't paying attention. And Sunday night when I got home, I opened up to see how many comments I had. And it told me that that video had something like 1,700 views. And I'm like, wow, that, that's kind of like more than triple, I think, or something like that. So that was good. So I looked just before I started filming this so that I could tell you guys. At this point in time, okay, so from Sunday morning at 5 a.m. until now, which is Tuesday afternoon at almost 2.30, I have an average of 420 to 500 views, okay? 1,900. I've had 1,900. I have fully tripled. So these are a popular video. And it also garnered me about 100 new subscribers. So I don't know what it was about the coin purses that YouTube was pushing out, but they must have done something different because more new people are picking up on the coin purses and are watching my channel. So yay for scrappy monster coin purses because they are, they're fun to make and I showed two ways of making them. But I just wanted to share with you the little thrills that I get every once in a while when something like that happens. Because the last time it happened, it was a quilt block. When I made the crazy quilt block, that went, I mean, I know it's not viral compared to a lot of videos that some people put out. But for me, it was a viral video because it got a lot of views and it got them very fast, just like this did. So there was that. I'm going to take a look and see if there was anything else I wanted to tell you about. Oh, yes, I did. Um, remember I said I took my sewing machine? <laughs> There's a story on that, too. So I didn't want to take my good machine to the craft fair. Even though I have a case, it's on wheels, like a suitcase kind of thing. I roll it. I thought... I'm going to take my old one, the brother machine that I complain about all the time because I got a dud. And for any of you who haven't heard that story, I have a brother CS6000i that I bought, oh, 10 years ago. And I had heard so many good things about it online and the price wasn't bad. I bought it and have had nothing but trouble with that. The thread... The threader doesn't work. I don't, it used to at the beginning, it would work about half the time, but now it won't work at all. Uh, when I sew these bags here, when I am inside trying to sew through this, it stops. It gets to the seam, it stops and it goes, Rrr. and you can try to hand crank it. It won't sew through it. Now, I know, uh, Robin from RS Island Crafts, she has a YouTube channel. She has one and she loves her machine. She says it works great as a backup machine. I have a friend whose name is also Marie. Hers works well. I think I got a dud. Well, I know I got a dud because I know these two ladies aren't lying to me. Their machines work. Mine just does not work well. So anyway, I took it with me thinking, I'm just going to be sewing simple things like bookmarks and catnip toys and things like that. What trouble can I get into? Not a good idea. First off, I'm used to this one. Now this one will change needle position from center. It will go left, it will go right. It's the first machine I've had that does more than just a couple of position changes. I forgot that that machine doesn't do this. So that was problem number one. Problem number two was I forgot. My universal foot. So all I had was because the first day I had this, I had my walking foot. So the first day I was all set. 
And I wrote it on my list that when I got home, I needed to bring my universal foot, but I'm sure you can tell from the way the story's going that that did not happen. So I was stuck there all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And the machine just, I couldn't do anything with the zigzag. So I was trying to do lanyards and I wanted to do that swirly serpentine stitch. Couldn't do that because I had a quarter inch foot and a zipper foot. <laughs> so Marie did not plan well for taking her sewing machine to the craft fair. So I cannot think of anything else that I wanted to tell you guys about the craft fair. Um, I really appreciate all your good thoughts and well wishes and everything. You guys really, really warm my heart. Um, I'm sorry. I tried to put on makeup. I know I look tired. I am still exhausted. Um, this really took a lot out of me to do the craft fair. But uh, anyway, oh, I know one other thing. A few of you had mentioned okay in the comments on youtube which is very hard for me to go back and find people but two or three of you had asked me if my husband would be willing to sell them and i think you were talking about that you may have been talking about this i don't know but i'm hoping this video reaches you because um he would be willing to make a few i don't think he's going to go into mass production of them But if you're interested, please email me at the email address below that's in the description box. It's Marie's Scrappy Creations at Yahoo.com. That's my email address. Um, I've had a few of you interested in buying after the craft fair, which I said I was willing to do. I've had, I had a woman, oh, I knew there was something else I wanted to tell you. I had a young lady stop at my booth Sunday and she said, she, after she looks around and she's got her hands full of stuff, she says, do you have an online store? And I said, no, I'm sorry. I said, I've really been thinking about it though. I said, but Etsy takes up quite a chunk from my understanding right off the top. And she says, well, you should because I'd buy one of everything. I love it all. <laughs> and she was so sincere, you guys. Seriously, she was just a doll. So I have thought more about that. And um, a friend of mine goes through a website called Go Imagine, and that's where she sells. It's similar to Etsy. It's just cheaper to sell. I've also thought of making... A Facebook group now I know I have a Facebook group but I have a rule on there of no selling because I didn't want to have people on there selling their stuff me trying to sell my stuff and that wasn't what I was going for I just wanted to make that um, kind of go along with this channel so like with the monster tutorial you guys come on there and show me the monsters you made. That's, you know, sharing scrappy creations, whether I put out a tutorial or not. Just sharing scrappy ideas. I didn't want to turn it into sales. But I guess what I'm asking is, is there enough interest for me to either open a sales Facebook page or a Go Imagine or some other site? Or should I do like a live stream where I'm saying this is for sale, whoever comments first, or I don't know. How interested are you guys? Because I do need an outlet to sell my items. I guess I'm just wondering if there is enough interest. So if you guys can let me know. But I do have one person. She already spoke for this bag. And there was one other that was spoken for. But if there's something that you know you want, you can contact me again at the email address below, which is Marie's Scrappy Creations at yahoo.com. So let me know what you think about an online store versus a group versus a live stream sale, or if you guys are even interested. Um, that will give me a better handle on what I should do, just knowing how many are interested.
So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I've yammered on long enough. I hope I haven't bored you. But again, thank you so much to everyone who sent me the gifts. You guys are so thoughtful and kind to me. And thank you guys for sitting here listening to me talk about all my stuff. I appreciate all the sweet comments. I just send my love to you all, you guys. Really, seriously, you guys are the best subscribers. I told someone else that as YouTube, I'm like, I have the best subscribers. I Hands down, without a doubt, I have the best. I'm going to link Adam So's, his video link down below so you guys can check him out. He's the one who sent me the Tula Pink fabric. And I'm going to also put a link down below to Gail Marshall's page where she makes all those beautiful handmade cards. So until Sunday's tutorial, actually you might see me on a quilt along or maybe a live stream. But until next time, you take care. Dig into that scrap pile. You know you want to get creative and make something, right? Be kind out there. The world needs more of that. And I'll see you next time right here at Marie's Scrappy Creations. Bye-bye.